Hello again, everyone. Daniel here, and I am downtown at our public library. We're going to take a big tour and learn all about the services we offer here in Davenport. So come on, let's go. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the library. We're yeah. glad to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited, excited to be here. So yeah, I'm Amy Groscuff. I'm the director of the library. Happy to tell you what you need to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you know, for me, obviously, a lot of people know the, the basics of libraries and checking in and out books and stuff. But just how is the library governed? How is it structured? And, and what goes into that? Well, one of the things that's really different with the library from other city departments is that we're governed by an independent um, library board of trustees. Mm. So the trustees are appointed by the mayor. They are confirmed by the council. And they serve six-year terms um, strictly as volunteers. And I think it really speaks to the dedication of our trustees and that most of our trustees decide to serve two consecutive terms. Wow. Um, so they serve 12 years with us. That's, so. that's a big commitment. They must be pretty passionate then about what the library does. Yes, they sure are. So. And um, they set our policy. Okay. Um, they're responsible for hiring and evaluating the library director and, and things like that. So. Okay. Well, and then how many, I mean, obviously we have more than one location within the library system, but. How many locations are there, and is there a difference between one or the other? Or, you know, is a, I'm sure a library is not just a library. Everything's probably <laughs> unique. Well, um, the two branches are, were actually designed so that the interior spaces are really quite similar. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that way they offer um, a lot of the same similar services. Sure. Um, our first branch is on Fairmont Street. Um, 3000 North Fairmont, kind of over by West High School, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they are right next to Scott Community College, so their um, they're adult learning campus that's there. So we have a lot of nice programs with them. Um, that library gets a lot of use by kids after school, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Um, people using the public computers to apply for jobs and, oh, sure. and all those kinds of things. Yeah. And then our other branch is on Eastern Avenue in the Prairie Heights subdivision. So that's in a kind of a really new area of town. And um, our kids programs, um, especially some of the story times, those are super popular there because again, the neighborhood has so many young families in it. So, right. so that really kind of dictates the differences between the buildings is we try to adjust the programs and services that we offer to meet the needs of that specific neighborhood. Oh sure, I mean that makes a lot of sense. Obviously the environment here downtown is even different than either of those two locations too. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I know something that I've been hearing a little bit about is owls. Uh, I was wondering if you could you could share a little bit about the OWLS program or what OWLS is. Sure. Well, the OWL is what we call our Outreach Wheeled Library. Mm -hmm. So um, our youth services librarian came up with a clever name so we could kind of brand that and have some fun with it. Sure. And sure. Um, so the OWL is part of our outreach department, which we just started a couple years ago. And it's a vehicle that will allow us to take library services out into the community more. Okay. So it's not a bookmobile. Sure, that was going to be my, my next question. I was like, so is it the bookmobile? I'm sure so you get that a lot. So it's not a bookmobile, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it um, will be able to take programming into the parks. Um, it's Wi-Fi enabled, so we can be a Wi-Fi hotspot in neighborhoods That's as needed. Um, and we um, take deposit collections to senior centers and, you know, like, take a group of, you know, 60 books and drop them off at a senior center so the folks there can check them out and use them or use them there and then we swap those out, you know, say every, you know, six weeks or so with more um, materials and we do the same thing with daycares. So um, we really want to use it to get reading materials um, out to people in the community with a really strong focus on getting things to kids right. and especially younger kids to really work on early literacy. Right. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, getting out in the community with what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've really learned that a lot of people, even with the branches, they just can't get to the library. Sure. So, um, and a lot of kids are home and parents are working during the summer or after school. Um, so if we can get the, the library into a park that they can come in and use our services. Okay, great. And, and actually, I do have one other question. I guess maybe one final question. Um, I overheard some people talking about the River Share program. Uh, what what is River Share as far as a network for the library? So River Share is the consortium that we're a member of with the other Quad City area, Iowa Quad City area public libraries, and also with the community colleges. So that gets us up to Clinton, um, to Clinton Public Library and the community college there, down to Muscatine to Muster Public Library, um, and Muscatine Community College. But then also the um, 
Scott County Library System, Bettendorf, um, LeClaire Public Library. And what that means is that if you have a library card with a Davenport Public Library, um, you can check out materials at any of those libraries, or you can log into our catalog and you can request materials from any of those libraries be sent to whatever location is convenient for you to pick them up. So it really increases the, the services or the materials that we can offer to all of our patrons. So, and then if we don't have enough within Rivershare for you and we can't find that title there, Davenport is a member of another consortium called Mobius and that gives patrons access to materials held by libraries all through um, Missouri and into um, Oklahoma and over to Denver Public Library. Oh, so, wow. um, so millions and millions of other titles that people can request through that system as well. Huh. Wow, that's a lot of useful information, a lot of things I didn't know. And I know we're going to be going around the library today, so where are we off to first? We're going to go to talk to the information services staff. Um, they do a lot of our, um, our reference requests, but they also order our materials. And I think they're mostly going to talk about what goes into selecting the things that you see on the shelves here and, and, and how do we make those decisions? Cool. Let's go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hello. Um, hi. hi. My name is Michelle Richmond and I'm an information services librarian here at the Davenport Public Library. And our department is the information services department and we, a we answer hundreds of questions throughout the year from uh, phone, email, text, and in person from different patrons that come in and we help them with their information needs. Sounds like a, a ton of customer service that you all deal with. But Amy also mentioned that you um, possibly order the material for the library too. How does that work for you and your team? Well, all the librarians here at the library have different sections that they order the materials for. And our goal is to have a well-balanced collection that represents all different points of view so everybody can find their own self and their own voice here at the Davenport Public Library. And how we order is we look at different journals, different magazines that are geared towards librarians that give us a small synopsis of a book so we can decide if it's a good fit for our collection or not. So as librarians, you're actually reading all the time, I assume. <laughs> not here, but, but when we are at home, a lot of us right. do. And we like to read reviews so we know, you know what, what's coming, what's, yeah. so we can have the latest uh, books and materials and DVDs and audiobooks and everything on the shelf for our patrons. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know they were also mentioning some really great e-resources that you have. We do. We have a lot of things that patrons can um, access from home that um, they just need their Davenport Public Library card. So let me show you here. Oh, great. Cool. Start at the Davenport Public Library's website, which is www.davenportlibrary.com. And in the top blue bar here, you're going to go to Research Tools and Online Resources. And this is an alphabetical list of every single resource we have that patrons can access with just their library card from home. So one resource that I would like to point out is Rivershare Overdrive, which allows our patrons to have access to thousands of e-books and e-audiobooks. Another resource I'd like to highlight is tutor.com, which is right underneath here. And this provides live tutor service from 1 to 9 p.m. every single day. Wow, I had no idea that the library provided the overdrive service. You could download books right to your phone. And as a dad with a two and a four year old, I'm definitely going to be downloading some books to listen to. And also too, the tutoring from 1 to 9 p.m. What a great resource for our citizens. So have you ever been back here at the library by the elevators and wonder what is behind the giant doors? Well, I have permission to go in with you to the technical services department. Hello, I'm Daniel. Hello, I'm Meredith. Yeah, I'm the technical services supervisor at the library. Okay, cool. And so this is this is the, where the magic happens in technical <laughs> services. Yes. So can you tell me just a bit about technical services, just kind of an, an overview of what that means for the library? Um, so in tech services, we actually order the materials, catalog them, and process them before they go out on the floor for the public to check out. Okay. So, I mean, obviously ordering is the purchasing <laughs> of the materials. Yes. Um, but what's maybe part of that process we would, we would never know, you know, <laughs> never assume? So we do most of our ordering electronically. Mm -hmm. um, so once the um, librarians choose the materials, then they send an email to our staff and they place the order. And then when it comes in, in boxes, we unpack it and um, anything that has a hold on it for patrons gets put on a special cart that goes to the front of the line to be cataloged. Um, because we know patrons are waiting for it. Sure. Um, other stuff gets put on a cart to be cataloged. Um, and so then they would give it to the catalogers to um, actually catalog the book, which means assigning the call number, um, giving it a barcode, um, that kind of stuff. 
And then after the catalogers are done with it, it moves down to the processing end of the room and the processors put all the labels on it, put the RFID tags in it. Um, and then once it's done with that, it gets put out on the floor for the patrons to check out. So, so every book, every book gets a little bit of love. Yes. So cool. Is it is it possible to see the the processing sure. area? Sure. Yep, we Great. can. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Let's go. Okay. So we put the label on, and then we put um, the call number sticker on the spine. And the barcode goes on the cover. And then we have a little tab that has the barcode number on it that goes on the inside on the first page. And then we have a location sticker that tells which branch that it belongs to and when we added it to the collection that goes right under that little tab. And then we put the RFID tag in the back. And we stamp the title page. If I can get the stamper open. All right, now that we know how a book is prepared for the public, let's head back up front to customer services and learn some more. Come on. Hello, I'm Daniel. Hey, I'm Bethany. Okay, and, and what do you do up here in customer service? I do a lot of things in customer service. Basically, if you have a book at home, somebody in customer service has probably handled it before it got to you. Mm. So when things get returned, when things go back out, if you place a reserve on something, we're the people that process that and get it to you. So you're really handling a lot of different things coming from kind of a lot of different directions going yes. out, coming in. Yep, stuff that you return will handle that. Stuff that are coming from different libraries in the system will handle that too. And oftentimes, if you talk to a librarian because we have something, you want something that we don't have and it comes from outside of the Quad City area, we are also going to process that when it comes in. So, and so then also with customer services, do you issue the library cards and stuff we like do. that? We yeah. do. We do issue the library card. So you can sign up for a library card online. Um, you can have full access and not even talk to us if you want to and get all of our online stuff. But if you wanted to come in and actually get stuff, you would need a physical card and that's where you would talk to me. Okay, gotcha. And I also hear that you're in charge of the coolest machine in the library, the sorting machine. Yes, this frees up so much of our time so we can do other things for patrons. We run materials on the sorter and the sorter can actually read the RFID tags that are on it and put it into different places. So it separates all the materials for us so it's easier for us to sort them out. So can we take a peek and see how it works? Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. Let's go. We actually just got a shipment, a delivery in, so I can show you exactly what happens when we do that. This is how we sort all of the materials, and the sorter is going to tell me exactly where this needs to go. Uh, now that we've seen one of the coolest machines that the city of Davenport owns, we're going to head over to a really exciting department here in the library. Behind me is our youth services, so we'll go check that out. Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm Emily Simpow. I'm the youth services supervisor at the Davenport Library. Cool. So youth services, I mean, there's a lot going on. So I mean, can you tell us a little bit about youth services and what all you do? Yeah, so youth services encompasses all of our children's and teen programming from zero to 19. Um, we are the youth services librarians select all of our materials um, and we also plan all of the programming that we do um, for children and teens at the library. Um, do you have any programs that you think are particular favorites of yours? Or? Um, we've recently started doing activities to go kits and they've been really popular with our patrons. Um, so basically, I have one right here. Oh, cool. Um, so this one was summer camp in a box. Uh -huh. So um, everybody gets um, and a sheet with all of the supplies and pictures of the different crafts that are in here. So as a dad with a two and a four year old, what's a, kind of a good first time activity maybe to bring kids down to experience? Well, everyone loves story time. Yeah. Um, so that would be a good one. We have them for all ages. Um, We've got baby story time that's more of a lap sit program 
um, and a, usually a wild story time for toddlers, um, preschool story time, um, and we've even done some after school story times for older kids that have maybe aged out of our traditional story times. Obviously, you know, those are good resources for my four and two year old, but what about maybe uh, an older kid, a teen? Is there stuff for them to do at the library too? Yeah, absolutely. We have a really awesome teen librarian, um, Amber, and I bet that if we head over here, she'd love to tell you. All right, let's go. Hey, Amber, Hello. how's it going? So um, Emily just told me that you are sort of in charge of the teen section here. So what all can a teen experience at the library? Um, lots of things. So for us, we consider teens ages 11 to 19, mm. so really middle school, high school. Um, so our books kind of encompass that big range of readers. Um, so we have everything from the fiction, um, nonfiction that's directed at teens specifically, graphic novels, DVDs. Um, video games, we kind of buy all sorts of things for teens. And then we do a whole bunch of awesome programming in the library as well as I do a lot of outreach at the schools um, to kind of bring the library to them. What do you do when you do outreach into the schools for teens? Yeah, the most popular one is book clubs. Um, so I partner with the school librarian, which is really awesome for both them and us because um, I'm able to bring a lot of those like newer books that school libraries aren't necessarily able to purchase. Oh, sure. um, and then we do sort of a book club activity. Um, the book club members will talk about what they've been reading. Um, and then on very exciting years, we've been trying to bring in a young adult author um, about one or two every year. So we've had some really big names. Um, Jason Reynolds, who's a award-winning, best-selling, big deal. Um, we brought in um, 2018, which is really exciting. Um, and then we've also brought Dana Davis. Um, some of you may know her because she graduated from North High School. Wow. Um, she cool. is now a published YA author. And um, last year we had to postpone, but she'll be coming soon, Tiffany Jackson, who's also an award winning, best selling author. So we try to bring in about one or two each year um, for the teens to experience. Well, that's really great. I mean, to connect them with people who are actually creating them because authors can seem so elusive or, you know, grander than maybe they are when you yeah. meet them. Oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. yeah. They always, um, it's nice because everyone gets very excited about their books. Everyone's reading the same things so they're able to, to discuss. Um, and then to meet the author and hear the stories behind the books um, is really great. Cool. And then any, any other super special thing you love about the teen department at the library? Oh, well, we do a lot of big events, which is really cool. So in addition to partnering with the schools, I also partner with all the other Quad City libraries to do several big teen events. Um, we do a teen reading challenge every October um, where we give away lots of prizes. Teens compete to see which library um, can read the most minutes. Uh -huh. cool. um, we do a teen video contest. Um, where they can produce either a short video, kind of like a TikTok video, or a long video, and then we give away um, $100 prizes um, for that. Um, we do all sorts of things. We also do just regular programming, sort of like um, the children. So we also have our own activity boxes. Our kits are a little smaller, so we tend to do just sort of one craft per box. Sure. Um, and we meet um, and do those together. So it's, for teens, it's a lot more of a social activity in addition right. to the craft. Um, just to bring teens together and get to talk to one another in person is great. Sure. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Have a good one. Hello, I'm Daniel. Hi, Daniel. I'm Catherine Coombs. I'm the Special Collections Supervisor okay. here at the Richardson Sloan Special Collections Center in the, at the Davenport Public Library. Well, this is really impressive. I mean, you walk down here and it feels almost like you're in a brand new, different library. So, I mean, obviously... It, it probably does some functions that the traditional upstairs library doesn't. So could you share about, um, about special collections? So we're like a mini library within ourselves. So we do everything that the library does upstairs, but we have a specific po focus. Okay. So we do local history and genealogical materials. So we collect those, acquire, um, describe, and provide access to those materials okay. to the public. And, and I see you have some materials here. So this is probably some of the different types of materials that you collect and that people can access? Exactly. So we have um, all of our books that are cataloged are in our catalog, so you can search for those. But some of our other materials, you might have to reach out to us or look in different spots for those. So okay. um, this is just a few of our items. So this is a book from our close stacks which we'll walk back there just super briefly. So this sure. is the Scott County history of Davenport and Scott County, Iowa. It's an illustrated edition. Um, it is from, it has beautiful end papers. This is printed in 1910. 
Wow. So you can see that it uh, has beautiful binding and things like that. So if you want to learn about Scott County or Davenport history, that's your go-to. Okay. Um, we have a collection of ephemera, so materials that um, might have been thrown away or just like loose records and things like that. So we have this. This is a, a United States citizen document. Okay. So it's a person signing to become a citizen of the United States. Wow. Okay. And then this one, so we have maps and architectural drawings. So this is one of my favorite ones. Um, this was a survey of the Rock Island Rapids on the uh, Mississippi, and it's done by Robert E. Lee in, huh. let's see, what's, what year? Oh, 1837. Wow. So before the Civil War. Sure. And then we have other maps. So we have plat maps of the area. I'll hold it up so you can see it. This is of Rockingham, so down on the west end. Okay. And then we also have fun things like, um, and very useful tools for finding out um, information about buildings and things like that. So we have the Sanborn maps, and that's us right here. Okay. And huh. this edition of the Sanborn maps is from 1956. So this is a condensed version. If you've seen other Sanborn maps, they're very large, and they've been pasted over because you just get new buildings, things get burnt down, destroyed, things like that. And so, or new things get just built on empty plots of land. So then you have to update it. Huh. So, so I run Davenport Junior Theater with the city and yeah. um, it's the second oldest children's theater in the country and long standing history with Davenport. So if I was coming down to investigate something like that um, as a citizen, yep. would I just come down and, yep. and ask some questions at the desk and so, figure out what might be available? Yeah, exactly. So right now we do take um, visitors by appointment only sure. just because of COVID. Yep. Um, and so you get an hour down here with us, but we can um, assist you finding materials. You can have a conversation with us and we can say, okay, you can look here, here, and here. We can bring out materials for you from our closed stacks and then yeah okay and i hear the closed stacks are pretty cool <laughs> yes so can we go check those yes, out yes right. come on i want to I see you operate them okay so right back here so this is our closed stacks portion of our library so these are collapsible shelving units that spin and you can move them probably one or two at a time so we have newspapers, we have um, magazine storage, we have um, a range of closed stack materials, so our books, but we also have um, archive and manuscript collections. So that's um, materials that are collected by people, individuals, groups, or businesses and things like that. So um, we have those materials back here. It's all the way down. Well, it's been a pretty exciting trip down here at the Davenport Public Library. So definitely come on down and explore this place yourself. There's, as you can see, more here than I ever thought there was. So, and of course, I'll see you at the next session.